Hello and welcome back to what is the final video in our beginner's guide to Photoshop Elements series right here at freephotoshop.com. If you've been with me for the entire series then you'll know that we now have our final composition of this London Zoo poster right here in front of us. In this video we're going to look at the best ways to save this image, then we're going to move on to how we would prepare the image for sending via email, followed by how we could tackle printing the image, and then I'll show you how to archive your entire photographic collection which is always a good thing to do. Before we move on to all of that however I want to touch on the subject of image size and resolution because when you're outputting an image in Photoshop it's really going to help to have a basic understanding of what these two terms mean. So I'm going to come up here to the image menu and I'm going to select the resize menu from the image menu and then I'll select the image size command to open up the image size dialog box that allows you to change the size of the active document so this doesn't relate to layers just the image as a whole so first of all the term image size is referring to the pixel dimensions of the image so in this case we're working with an image that measures 1395 pixels wide by 978 pixels high and if you multiply them together you get an approximate size of the image in megapixels but the important aspect to remember there is that image size relates to the width and the height values of any given image you have open next we have the resolution of the image down here and one really important thing to know is that the resolution value only matters when you're actually printing the image out and that's because it's a measurement of how many of your image pixels are squeezed into each square inch of the printed document. So at the moment we're working with an image that has a resolution of 72 pixels per inch, meaning that if we were to print the image out right now, we'd end up with a document that measures 49 centimeters by 34. We'd also end up with a printed document that looks a little pixelated, and that's because a resolution of 72 pixels per inch is way too low for printing we'd need something like 300 pixels per inch and if I go ahead and enter that then the size of the printed document dramatically decreases to around about 12 centimeters by 8 and by the way just like the resolution value these document dimensions are also only relevant when going to print in fact we can play around with the document size and resolution values as much as we want and we're never actually changing the physical size of the image up here. If for some reason we did want to change the actual number of pixels in the image, so reduce the number of pixels, as we'll be doing when we look at sending the image by email, or increasing the pixels, which I wouldn't generally recommend, then we can turn on this resample image checkbox at the bottom to directly alter the number of pixels, which is the process of resampling an image. Okay, well, I hope that gives you a basic understanding of what image size and resolution is all about. If you want more information, then you can go ahead and watch two other tutorials available here at freephotoshop.com called Image Size and Resolution and Resample versus Resize. I'm going to finish up here by cancelling out of this dialog box back to our finished image. And before we do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and save the image out. Now, if this was just a photograph and I'd spent, say, a couple of moments correcting colours and perhaps applying a little bit of sharpening, then I'd be inclined to save it out as a JPEG and think no more about it. But because this is an image that I've put a lot of work into and I may want to come back tomorrow and change the text size or the position of the gorilla or something else, I'm going to go ahead and first of all save it out as a PSD file, meaning that I'm saving it with all the layers intact. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to the File menu, and then hit the Save As command. Go ahead and navigate to where you want to save the file, and then make sure that the Format drop-down menu here, make sure that this is set to Photoshop Document, or PSD for short. We also want to make sure we're saving this in the organizer, and more importantly that we're saving the layers. And then go ahead and save the color profile as well. 
When you're done, go ahead and hit the save button and the image will be saved onto your hard drive. Now I don't want to go ahead and save it this time, so I'm going to cancel out of here. I've already saved this file before, so I don't want to save it again in this particular example. The next thing you may want to do is save the image as a JPEG. Now unlike the PSD format, a JPEG is a file format that supports compression. So when you save the file, you're effectively throwing away some of the pixel information from the image. Not something that you'd want to do over and over again to the same image, but once or twice at the best compression settings isn't going to cause too many problems. Now before I save out the image, I need to flatten it all down to one layer because the JPEG format doesn't support layers. And instead of letting the save as command do the flattening for me, I want manual control here so I can spot any issues that might come about from the flattening process. So to do that, I'm going to come up here to the layer menu, and then right from the bottom here, I'm going to select this command, flatten image. That goes ahead and flattens all of the layers, and I get to make sure that everything flattens OK before saving out. When I'm satisfied that it does, I'll come back up here to the file menu, and choose the save as command once again. This time I'll choose JPEG though from the file format drop down menu. Once again though I'll make sure that it's included into the organizer and that we're saving the color profile. And then I'll go ahead and hit the save button and up pops the JPEG compression settings dialog box. I'm going to make sure that I'm saving it to the best quality I can, which has as little compression as possible and I'll also make sure that I'm using the baseline optimized format like so. And then once I'm finished, hit OK. Simple as that really. We've now saved the image as an uncompressed PSD, as well as a compressed flattened JPEG. And if I want to bring back the layers, I can simply come up here to the undo button and give it a click. And things return as to how we started. So you can see from the layers palette that all our layers come back as they were before. Now I'm going to show you a great way here inside Photoshop Elements to email the image out. There's a lot of ways to do it, but this is what I consider to perhaps be the most convenient way of all the different methods. I'm going to come up here to the top right corner and click on the Organizer button to send me back to the Adobe Organizer. Then I'll come over to this green button, which is in fact the Share button, and I'll give it a click, and from the sub-menu of different sharing methods, I'll come down to the email attachment button and give it a click. Now, what we've got to do is basically work down through the options it gives us, starting at the top here. So the first thing we need to do is locate the image that we want to email across. And I'm going to go for this one here. So I'll simply drag the image into the dark grey box we've got on the right hand side, just like so. Next we need to select the image size. And Photoshop Elements is going to offer a load of presets that generally match popular screen sizes. Generally, a good screen size to aim for is something like 1024 by 768. But the larger the image size you go for, the larger the resulting file size. Worth keeping that in mind. Next, you need to select the quality of the JPEG. The lower you have the quality settings, the smaller the file size. The secret, of course, is to achieve a good quality image, but keeping the overall file size as low as possible. Personally, I very rarely go for a compression setting lower than 9, because I'm a firm believer that file size is less important than the actual quality of the image. So in other words, I'd rather have somebody waiting a few more seconds to download the image than to end up with a low quality version. So with that in mind, I'm going to up it to a quality setting of 10 on this occasion, but as always, the key is experimentation. So perhaps you may want to save a version at 9, and then save a version at 10, and just do an on-screen comparison to see which one you think is best. Okay, when we're happy, we can go ahead and hit the next button, and we get a few more options, so we can enter things like a brief explanation for the body of the email. We can also select some recipients to send the email to, I'm going to hit OK once again and Photoshop Elements will create an email message in your system's default email application, which in my case is Outlook Express, and then we can go ahead and send it as we normally would. Now that's great if you use a mail client like Outlook, but if you use a web-based email account, something like Hotmail or Yahoo or Gmail, then you're going to have to work in a different way. 
So let's cancel out this message and switch back to the full edit mode. And this next command is a great command for creating images to send either via email or if you're wanting to optimize your work for a website. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back up to the file menu and then I'll select this command right here, save for web. Now I'm not going to go through this in any detail, but I just wanted to show you that it's here. You've basically got your original image on the left hand side and the optimized version on the right, allowing for the active settings in this panel right here. So we can select a format, change the image size, and also construct very simple layer based animations. And watch as the preview window right here gives us an on the fly preview of the settings we've entered. OK, I'm going to cancel out of here so we haven't made any changes. And I'm going to revisit the image size dialog box. So I'll come back up here to the image menu and I'll select the resize sub menu and then choose the image size command to open up the familiar dialog box. For now, I'm going to turn my attention to printing the image out. You can resample the image specifically for email output if you like, but as I say, for now, I'm going to focus on the printing. And I'm going to use, say, a local inkjet printer attached to the PC for this example. Now, the first thing to know is that practically all printers come with their own software. So when you first attach the printer that you've got at home to your computer, you would have loaded up some software which helps your computer and printer talk in the same language effectively. And this will make things run a lot smoother in the long run. We'll come to that in a moment. For now, though, we're going to start at the beginning. And that's right here inside the image size dialog box where we're going to make sure the image is at the right size for our printing needs. Now at the moment, of course, we're going to print an image that's 49 by 34 centimeters big. Uh, and that's a little bit too big for what we want. So I'm going to change the unit of measurement, first of all, first and foremost, to the inches measurement. And then I'm going to make sure that resampling is unticked down here because we don't want to change the overall pixel dimensions. We don't want to chuck pixels away at this stage. Next, I'll change the width of the image to 10 inches. And because we're not resampling, we're going to maintain the same proportions. So we're going to be printing what is approximately a 10 by 7 inch image at a resolution of 139.5 pixels per inch. To accept those changes, I'm going to hit the OK button and we now have the correct size image for printing. Now you remember in the previous video, I said that I would generally leave the sharpening process until last. Well, now's the time I would usually do it. I would flatten all the layers, except for the text, of course, and then apply my sharpening to the flattened layers, or the flattened layer, I should say, in this situation. And that's regardless of the output method, by the way. I would always sharpen at the end of my editing. OK, I'm going to come back up here to the layer menu, and once again select the flatten command. And just like that, we're ready to print. So I'll come back up here to the file menu, and then choose the print command, from the bottom here. Now we get to select our printing preferences from this big old dialog box that Adobe throws at us. So I'll start by making sure the orientation of the page is correct using these little icons down here. Then I'll come back up and select the printer I want to use, which in this case, and this is going to be different for you of course because you're not necessarily going to have the same printer that I've got, but I'm going to be using an Epson Stylus Photo RX700. And if that changes your orientation when you select it, then just go ahead and change it back. The rest of the options in this column you shouldn't need to change because we did all of this work inside the image size dialog box by selecting things like the image size and the resolution. Over here under the output banner, we can add graphical elements to the printed document. And underneath those, we can change our color management settings. And I'm going to start off by changing to Photoshop Elements Manages Color. And then we can get a little reminder, as you can see under here, that says, did you remember to disable color management in the Printer Preferences dialog? And that's just reminding you that if Photoshop Elements is handling color, then you need to manually switch off the printer's color management settings. And we can do that by hitting the Printer Preferences button. 
which opens up the dialog boxes that are specific to your printer. So at this stage you may see different dialog boxes that I'm seeing on my screen. And I'll quickly show you how to turn off color management on an Epson. But if you are using a different make, as I say, it will be different. I'm just giving you this as a kind of working example, I guess. I'll start by switching the quality to best photo. That's important because we want the best quality image. And if you know what paper you're using, it's always a good idea to set it here. That really will improve the quality of the final print. For now, I'm going to go into the advanced settings and then I'll click continue. Then under the color management options, I'll select ICM and then turn the color management off. I can then click OK to return to Adobe's printing dialog box. And I'm going to leave the other two options as they are. And then when I'm ready to print, I'll be able to just simply hit the print button to send my document to the printer. But just keep in mind that what we've done inside this dialog box, importantly, is that we have told Photoshop Elements to handle the color conversion as it sends it to the printer. And then we've gone into the printer's own dialog box and turned off the color management settings for the actual printer. So all the color management, everything that's happening in the conversion of color from how you see the image on screen to how you print it out is happening courtesy of Photoshop Elements. When you're done, you can go ahead and hit the print button to send the document to the printer. For now, I'm going to hit cancel though, because I'm not going to print anything inside this tutorial. I just wanted to show you an example of how to do it. And I have one last notion to pass to you before we call it a day, and that's backing up your images. I'm going to switch back to the organizer and then come up here to the file menu. And you can see we have two options, one to back up our image catalog and one to restore it. Now I would highly recommend you back up your images just in case you delete some by mistake or perhaps your computer crashes and your hard drive malfunctions. Whatever the reason, you've got to ask yourself how would you feel if you were to permanently lose all of your images inside your collection. To safeguard that from happening, here's how I work. I have an external hard drive connected to the PC and you can get hold of some high capacity external hard drives for some really great prices these days. And I basically keep all my images and important documents backed up on that. You don't even need to have the thing running all the time. You can also back up on another external or internal hard drive, I should say, or even a web-based backup location. I would highly recommend the external hard drive, though. It's a really cheap and reliable way to work. And that just about wraps things up. I know we covered some of the more technical ground inside this video, but I really hoped you picked up some useful tips and tricks throughout the series and are now altogether more confident when it comes to taking advantage of the wonderful application that is Adobe Photoshop Elements. Thanks for joining me here as always at freephotoshop.com. Please send along any comments you have on this series or any tutorials that you watch on the site. I'm always pleased to receive them. For now, thanks for joining me and I'll see you back at the freephotoshop.com website.